This is always an important message for our church as this is the conclusion of this 21 days and the time that we begin to uh, push ourselves forward now in, in the endeavors and the initiatives that we have set before our church for this year. And I believe God is ready to speak in this place this morning. If you have your Bible and you want to turn to John 20 and 21, which has been our key verse, and then we're also going to read from Proverbs chapter 11 and Daniel chapter 12 this morning. John chapter 20 and verse 21 says, Then Jesus said to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. Amen? Look at your neighbor and say, You are sent. You are sent. That's right. And don't tell them you're sent to me. To, you know, don't, you're, you're sent to take care of all of my needs and look after me and pamper me. No, that's not what I'm talking about right? We're all sent. As Jesus was sent, you are sent. And we're going to learn why. Proverbs 11 verse 30 says, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he that winneth souls is wise. Amen. He that winneth souls is wise. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 3 says, and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Amen? You want to be wise this morning? You don't just stay at a Holiday Inn Express, right? If you want to be wise this morning, win souls. You're sent this year to do what God's called you to do. Amen? Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you for your word today. We thank you for your blessings. Bless us word today as we give you honor and praise. Move this church forward in 2021 as we are sent, Lord, to our community, to our field, to where we are to labor, O oh God, to do what you've called us to do. Make us wise, Lord. Make us soul winners. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give the Lord praise. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. We've been asking you to do some various fasts over the last 21 days. Some of these involved media, some involved vices, and others this week of food. My wife is preparing a delicious meal today, and we're going to partake of that delicious meal. And it's going to be so good, and, and we're going to really enjoy this meal as we have been uh, doing one meal a day late in the evening, and it has been a challenge throughout, throughout the day to, to try to make it to that evening meal. And I'll tell you, when you get there, you feel so good. You just want to consume everything <laughs> for, for a moment. But I appeal this morning to this church once again that we are not just a church of four walls inside here ministering to ourselves, ministering to each other. But rather, we are a soul-winning church. The Bible teaches us that to be wise, we shall win souls. I believe there are a lot of people who think they are wise today. Mm -hmm. And if you don't believe it, just scroll through Facebook and you will find all the wisdom that Solomon ever wished he had. It is poured out in a plethora of ways on Facebook. And then the debate begins, and they begin to call each other out on Facebook and how you don't know anything, and I know everything, and I wish you knew what I knew. And, uh, and so Solomon, boy, I believe he would have really had a good time with Facebook. I'll tell you, I've seen people on there, they're a doctor, a philosopher, a politician, and an economist, all wrapped in one package. I mean, they really ought to run for president because they know how to run everything. The Bible teaches us a lot about true wisdom. The Pharisees and the scribes, they, they thought they were wise. But in all their knowledge, they lacked common sense. Right? They got so caught up in, in creating these unique laws and things and ways for everybody to act and to do that they forgot that sometimes you just got to break that in order to sustain yourself. And so uh, Jesus came along, and, and, and that's what they were angry about. Because he, 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 
He plucked a little corn on, on the Sabbath. He, he healed somebody. Can you believe? He healed somebody on the Sabbath. That is just against our law. You don't break that. You don't, un, you don't understand. You're not supposed to do that. But common sense was thrown out the window, right? This morning, I can tell you, you can read a hundred books this week and still lack wisdom. You can still, you can do a whole lot of things and, and still lack common sense, right? There are some things that should be very obvious to us this morning. Here's a few of those. Number one, God is good. Come on. There's something that ought to be very obvious to us this morning. God is sovereign. Come on. We, we all get together on the same page in just a minute here. God is sovereign. He sets kings up and he takes kings down. He's sovereign. Don't forget that. Don't let the fear and the shaking and the quaking that's in this world and in this earth and even in our nation right now take a heart or take root in our life because that's not of God. God is sovereign. I'm trusting Him in all these things. Amen? Here's something we need to understand. Where there is great darkness, the light shines brighter. The greater the darkness, the greater the light. Amen? Come on, I want to live in the light. I want to be the light. I want the light to shine through my life into this dark world. And the darker it gets, the brighter my life can shine. Amen. Something we need to understand. The time is right for revival. The time is right for revival. You and I are surrounded by people who need Jesus. We are surrounded by a group of people that need Jesus. If there's ever a world that needed Jesus, amen? And finally this morning, we have His Spirit operating in our lives. When we put all of this together, when we combine all of those statements I just made, and we understand there, that, that He has it all in His hands, there's a need in this world. There's people that are hungry for what you and I have. Therefore, this morning, my statement is this. We have no excuses to not have revival. We have no excuses to not see the kingdom expanded in 21. Amen. I believe the field is ready. I believe the greatest revival has already started. Amen. I believe the best is not behind us. I believe the best is ahead of us. And I believe it's our time to be sent into our world to do what God has called us to do. Amen. This morning, my first statement is this. God is with the sent. Amen. God is with the sent. Luke 14, 23 says, And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges, and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. There's no better time now than now to reach the world that is around us. Our world is hungrier for a solution to life's burdens than it's ever been. Christ is now the only answer, not only for a lost and broken world, but for everyone that is seeking out there. I believe the world desperately needs Jesus. I love this. I've got an old gospel song here. And I, and I had the words, and I was going to read through all of the words. And they're very good, and I like what I have in these notes. But I'm going to pause right here, and I'm going to tell you something. If you felt the presence of God come into this place when they sang, There was Jesus. How many of you needed that this morning? Come on, how many of you just needed that this morning? You just, there was something in you this morning that was lacking, and when you got to play that song, there was Jesus. Man, it felt so good in this place. 
Oh, thank you, God, for moving like you did in this place. Thank you, God, for touching each of these that, that stepped out and th- others that threw their hands up and, and some that came for healing and some that came for needs this morning. I, I just felt God moved in this place. You know I'm setting you up. If you know God, if you've been in this forever, and you needed that this morning, what do you think about that person that's out there that's struggling with drugs and alcohol and all kind of seeking everything they can find to find some level of happiness and and good feeling in their life, and you and I have it? We just felt it. It just surged through this place in a powerful way this morning. Who am I and who are you to put a lid on that and say, that only happens inside this building right here, and that's just for us. Come on, God is with us, and God is with the scent. Amen. God wants to take us from this place out into that place and do something in us and through us. Amen. He said a certain supper was made, a great man a uh, man made a great supper and bade many, and he sent his servant uh, at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make an excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground. I must needs go and see it. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I have to train them, so I pray that I may be excused. And another said, I have married a wife, poor man, and therefore I cannot come. So that the servant came and showed the Lord these things. And then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city and bring hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. Go find anything and anybody. If they got breath and they got something, just bring them to the house. Bring them over here. We got a supper prepared. I got to feed somebody what I have here. The servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is still room. And then he said, go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in that my house may Be filled. Come on. If there's anything God desires, if there's anything he wants, if there's anything he's searching for, he's looking for somebody to come and to take of what he has prepared for us. Amen. And prepared for them. This morning we have felt it. We have engaged in it. We have have soaked it up this morning. But we're not made to be sponges. We are made to go out and give this gospel to somebody in this world. Those that turned down the invitation had better things to do. You know, we always have better things to do. It seems like there's always an excuse. There's always a reason. We always have something else we can be doing, but will this be the year that we are willing to slow down long enough to reach a soul for the name of Jesus Christ and for the kingdom of God? Are we willing to give enough of our time to the kingdom this year so that we can be sent and find somebody that we can uh, take their life and turn it around and they can feel what we have felt today? When God provided for the Israelites time and time again, they still failed to trust Him. For some of us this morning, it's not an issue of time. It's an issue of faith. I don't know that God can use me. I don't know that God can, can do that through me. I don't know that God can, I, I don't know that I'm good enough for, I don't know if I know enough Bible knowledge. I don't know that I know enough, uh, can teach a Bible study enough to, 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 to win a soul. I'm not sure that, that I'm qualified. I'm not sure that. Listen, this morning, if you felt that in here, if you felt what God did in here just a few moments ago, then guess what? That's what other people are going to feel. That's what they're going to sense. And it's our job and it's our duty to make sure that we make some time to win a soul in 2021. Can you believe that after he opened the Red Sea and caused them to go through it, that he led them with a cloud in the day and a pillar of fire at night, that they drank from a rock, and yet they said, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? 
We don't know if he can do that or not. We just walked through the Red Sea. We just saw Israel, the, the Egyptian army drown behind us. We, we've had all of these things happen so far, but you know, can, he, can he really provide a table in the wilderness? I guess I'm going to flip it around to you this morning in this way. How much has he done for you already? How much has he done for you? Sir, ma'am, how much, is he, how much has he provided in your life? How, how much has he made way for you? How many times has he parted the Red Sea and, 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 and fed you and, and had water run from a rock? And, 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 and you walked to the mailbox because the, the bank deposit, you know, the, the bank account was empty and you opened it up and there was a check or there was some, something to sustain you or God made a way. Or, and you thought, well, how did that happen? If he sustained you and he brought you and he's done for you, then it is our job and it is our duty to let to go out and to provide and to find people that have never experienced God in this fashion to bring them into the kingdom and say, God can do this for you too. You may not feel like you're capable or able, but don't be like the Israelites and challenge God and say, can God furnish a table in the desert? Oh, he can. He can make you a soul winner. But I choose to go be one without him having to make me one, right? The world is dark. We're in a spiritual battle. Ephesians 6 and 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of this darkness, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Let me just paraphrase that this morning. We aren't fighting each other, but we are fighting darkness and spiritual wickedness. Where good is evil and evil is good. So I believe we should be prepared to be sinned. I believe that if we're going to obey this command and, and God is going to go with us as we are sent into the world that we're trying to reach, I believe that we need to prepare ourselves for such a journey. So before I am sent, this morning. Before I am sent, I need to answer a few questions. Number one, do I have an intimate relationship with God? That is why we have spent 21 days trying to push ourselves away from the things of the flesh. Uh, not that, the, that eating is bad, that's not evil, and vices aren't evil. They can be evil, they can be used for evil things, but we have pushed ourselves away in such a way the last 21 days, not because we have all of these things that are causing sin in our life, but it's because if we have these things occupying our time and occupying our mind, then we're not able to be more intimate with God. So we've taken 21 days to, to speak to Him, to get closer to Him, to spend time in prayer, to spend time in the Word. And so that's what we have done. And I, I ask you this morning, do you have that intimate relationship with God? I'll, I'll tell you this, I know how we are. We, um, we get pulled over by the policeman here in the local area, right? And as soon as he gets to our window, we start telling him everybody that we know. I know Judge so-and-so, and I know uh, the district attorney, uh, and I know uh, uh, the chief of police, and, and I know the mayor, and I've been like, he don't really care how much you know or who you know. He knows you broke the law, right? He's not worried about all that. There's the book of, the, of Acts. There was a few men that tried to cast out a devil. And the devil said, Jesus I know. Paul I know. But I don't know you. Come on. You see where I'm going with this this morning? We need, if we're going to be sent, we need to have an intimate relationship with God. Level one, first step, 101, however you want to call it this morning. Everybody in this room, you are called to do something in the kingdom of God, but you cannot know what that is until you have an intimate relationship with your Creator. You are going to have to get that on your own. I can't do that for you. I can't challenge you enough or push you enough or or, or encourage you enough to do that on you, that has to come from you. You are the only one that can fall in love with Jesus and get an intimate relationship with Him 
and get where you spend time with Him. Amen? If you're going to make an impact in the world, you must be intentional about your relationship with the Master. Number two, we must be willing to listen to His voice. Amen? It's one thing to pray. It's another thing entirely to listen. When the Holy Ghost impresses upon you to give more or to reach out or to someone or to take a step of faith, will you listen to that? I did a message many years ago about sheep and how they listen to the voice of their shepherd. A shepherd can stand and give commands to a, a herd of sheep. He can command them and he can move them and take them places and make them stop and make them go. He can do all of this. I could step onto that same pasture and give the same command and tell the same words that he just used. But those sheep are not going to move at my voice. They move at the voice of the shepherd. You need to know what Jesus is saying to you this morning. You need to be in tune with what God is telling you today. Amen? You see, we we invite God into our life. We just don't want Him to make us uncomfortable. We just don't want Him to push us past a certain limit. We don't want Him to to get us out of our comfort zone. But this morning, when you have an intimate relationship with Him, and you know His voice, amen, you are going to move out in confidence because you're going to know it's God speaking to you and not you or your or man or somebody else. We need to be able to listen to His voice. Number three, you must be filled with His Spirit. Amen? If I'm going to be a witness for Him, I need to be filled with His Spirit. Acts 1 and 8 says, You shall receive power. This is Jesus' words. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and in the uttermost part of the earth. Do you have the power to make a difference this morning? We can't take on the world unless His Spirit is leading us. If you're here today and you're distant from God or you feel weak in your spirit, there's power in His presence. And I will tell you, it is a free gift to anyone that wants it this morning. The power of the Holy Ghost is here for anybody. It is the Comforter. It's the Spirit of Jesus that He sent back to dwell in this earth, to have communication with mankind, and to let us know He's working in our lives. Number four, we must remember that we are servants above all else. Amen? We are servants above all else. It is when we try to play the role of mastering our destiny that we go astray. Instead, make it your purpose to serve with passion. I will say my wife and I got an opportunity yesterday to go and to speak to the serve teams at uh, Brother Aaron and Sister Vani Lopez's church in Lake Charles. And we had a great time. And they have a beautiful building and a beautiful place and beautiful people. And my wife uh, did three split sessions. She did the same session three times. And I will tell you, by the third one, man, I was ready to just jump up and ran, run around the building, man. I mean, she had me fired up. She was talking to us about passion. And if you, if Gene and I may have some faults, we may have some failures, but passion isn't one of them, right? We are passionate about what we do at Church of Pentecost. We're passionate about our people. We're passionate about lost souls. We're passionate about serving God. Come on. If we're going to do anything in the kingdom of God, we're going to have to remember we're a servant and we're passionately called to serve what God was calling us to do. And last is be willing to be inconvenienced. God's timing is usually inconvenient, right? It's not always convenient when He calls us. To be sent means that you were called. And when God calls, it's usually not the best timing for you. It's not always what makes you comfortable. But we must be willing to align our will with His if we want the promises He has in store for us. Dr. Henry Cloud, the author of Necessary Ending, wrote this. Pruning is a process of proactive endings. It turns out that a rose bush, like many other plants, 
cannot reach its full potential without a very systematic process of pruning. The gardener intentionally and purposefully cuts off branches and buds that fall into any of three categories. Healthy buds are branches that are not the best ones. Sick branches that are not going to get well. And dead branches that are taking up space needed for the healthy ones to survive. The question I have for you this morning is, what dead branches have you held on to long enough to keep you from being a soul winner in the kingdom of God? Maybe it's a wound from the past. Maybe it's just sick branches. Maybe it's just poor habits of of communicating with your Savior and getting in close in touch with Him. Maybe it's healthy branches. Maybe it's things that you do well. Maybe it's things you do good. But good is the enemy of great. And sometimes I have to say no to some good things in my life so that I can have great things in my life. I don't know where you are in your process this morning. I don't know where you are in reaching a soul this year for for the kingdom of God. Whether it's leading a reach group, whether it's teaching a Sunday school class, whether it's helping in another area of this church, whatever it is this morning. But let's prune some things away in our life this morning. Anything that's dead, anything that's sick, or anything that's getting in the way of us being best, the best that we can be, let's prune this morning. Let's let God take us to a new place this year like we've never been before. Would you stand with me this morning? As your pastor, uh, you know, I'm not going to ask you to do something that I'm not doing. So I'm not pinning medals this morning, but I just want to say, I will be leading a group, and I will be co-leading with another couple this spring. Gina and I will be. And I will also be teaching Bible studies. I want you to know I'm going to be on the job. I'm going to be doing some things. I'm going to lead leaders of small groups. Those that are leading small groups are going to be in my small group. And we're going to go through a book about discipling others. But I was excited to co-lead with another couple in this church. And we sat around a table. We began to say, who do we want to to connect with? What, What kind of group do we want to have? And yes, there'll be some church members that will be part of our group. But we targeted non-church members for our group. We got a list. Each of us have a list of people that we are targeting to go and invite and bring to our small group because they are not part of this church. Or maybe they were at one time and have fell away. Or maybe they're just a friend of a friend that's at this church and, and they know about us, but they've never really connected to us. You know why we're, you know why I'm so excited? You know why my skin was crawling and, and I was ready to get up from that table and go do something? Because it excited me that maybe there was a non-church member that I could get involved in my reach group that may one day be a part of what I'm a part of. They may hear that song, There Was Jesus, and feel what I felt just a moment ago. Been on a 21 day journey to hear from God. And now it's time to launch. Amen. It's time to launch. I wonder how long it took from beginning concept to the launch of the space shuttle. I, I, I would say it, it had to take years. I mean, it had to be combined science from initially sending the Apollo missions up and doing all of that. But I wonder how long it took for them to get and design something that would leave the atmosphere and then re-enter the atmosphere and still be able to be in one piece and not burn up. I wonder how long it took for them to do that. I wonder how long that that space shuttle sat in that upright position on that that docking station and, and was ready to be launched. I wonder how long it took for them to fill those tanks and to get everything just right and check all the systems off and make sure it was all ready to go before they they hit the launch button. I would say it took years. I I would say the preparation, the hours and what have you that it took to make that shuttle and to get that shuttle off of that launch pad and into into orbit, I would say it took years. 
I may have some science geeks in here this morning. I shouldn't say geeks, but I, I may have some scientists in here this morning. How far is outer space above the earth? Anybody? No, not 10. I wish it was 10. I'd go 1,000. No, not 1,000. 62 miles is outer space. The space shuttle was launched with a target of 100 miles. In other words, Shreveport, Monroe, Baton Rouge, Lafayette, Lake Charles, all of those are about 100 miles from where we stand. You know how long it took the space shuttle to get to the 100 mile mark? Eight and a half minutes. It took the space shuttle eight and a half minutes to get the launching pad and go to where its intended target was. Eight and a half minutes. Hours, days, months, years, planning, putting together, getting it all together, figuring it all out to go eight and a half minutes. I guess what I'm trying to say is, I, I think as a church and as, as a body and as people of Christ, I think that we've some have spent years getting ourselves prepared, getting it all just right, learning this, learning that, what have you. But I just wonder if 21 wouldn't be the year we just hit the launch button. Amen? Th that 21 is the year that we said, you know what, we've been on this launching pad way too long. Amen, we've been in this place for way too long, but this is our year. We're fixing to launch this thing into the stratosphere. It's not that far. It's only 100 miles. It's only going to take eight and a half minutes to get there. sometimes that's speaking to us how long have we been preparing ourselves for this when we just need to say boom let's hit the button let's get the 10 second countdown let's get this thing moving I read an article the other day that said that there are some uh, strands of bamboo that they grow the, the roots start growing and they can grow up to 5 years together and they're under the ground and they're interlocking and they're getting the root system together. And just a matter of days, like 60 days or less, this bamboo will shoot out of the ground and become these huge stalks of bamboo after laying in the ground for five years getting the root system together. That's great stories about the launching of space shuttle. That's a great story about bamboo. That's not a great story for a church. Come on, we, we don't have five more years to put the root system together. We don't have five more years to plan the launch system. We don't have five more years to, to get everything together. Come on, we've got to go. The field is white with harvest. If we don't go out there, things are going to ripen in the field and rot in the field, and it won't be harvested in the timely manner that God has called it to be harvested. This morning, I stand here challenging our church, and I stand here telling each of us it is time for 2021 for us to say, I'm not just going to be average. I'm not just going to be good. I'm going to be launched into this year like God has never launched me before. I'm going to do something for the kingdom of God. I'm ready, God. I'm ready. Amen. If I have spoken to you this morning, if you are, are, are ready, to be launched into this year to win a soul. If that is a goal that you have, to win somebody for Christ in this year, I want you to come. we got plenty of room. We've made extra space in there. We can spread out. We can socially distance. If you're feeling a fear of that this morning, there's a place to socially distance you. Just spread out. But if you want to win a soul this year, I want you to come. If you want to see a life impacted this year by, by your speaking to somebody, witnessing to somebody, talking to somebody, telling them about the gospel. Amen. This is awesome. Amen. Look at this. Look at this. Are you ready, church? I feel like God's ready to take us into another dimension with you. I believe this is the year we're going to go make disciples. I believe this is the year we're going to reach past where we've ever done before. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, I pray your burden upon each of us this morning. I pray, God, that we can put a lost soul upon our heart today, God. Lord, that whoever it is, Lord, that I'm going to impact. Whatever life that I'm going to cross this.
this year. Whatever personal God is dependent upon me for them to make eternity. I pray, God, that you would put that soul upon my life. I pray that you would put their face before my face. I pray that you would speak through me into their life, oh God, this year. And help me, oh God, to do what you call me to do. Lord, I have sinned this year. I've sinned with purpose, God. I've sinned with direction, God. I've sinned with your voice. I, I've sinned because I and it's expected of me, God, because I have to give to somebody what I have been given. So I pray over these people right now. I pray over these that have accepted this today. And I believe right now, Lord Jesus, you're filling us with your spirit. And our, your voice is going to be prevalent. Then we're going to enter into a, an intimate relationship with you like we haven't before. We're going to be willing to be inconvenienced. And we're going to prepare ourselves to launch. In Jesus' name. I believe it, God. I receive it right now, Jesus. Lord, I don't want the, the devil to, to say, Jesus, I know, and Paul, I know, but I don't know who God is. I want them to know that I'm battling with him in the, in the dark world powers and principalities, and that God knows my name, that he has sent me into this earth to do something great for him. And it's by his power and it's by his might that we will see all these things come to fruition. 